Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Thor, Love and Thunder. So as I normally do, there won't be that much major spoilers or uh, plot reveals. Up front, I'll say I really enjoyed this movie. I do have uh, some nitpicks. And I would say it's not going to be my favorite, although it has some of my favorite moments in it. Basically, this continuation in the Thor, the MCU, really ups the uh, fun factor. But I sort of wanted to see a more mature Thor coming into his own. That's probably my own little nitpick, but this is going to be a children's movie that they are going to love. And I just want to say Natalie Portman, just fabulous in this movie. I don't care if they CGI'd her or she really... Uh, went on a diet and bulked up but she looks amazing and she is a standout in this movie she's a standout in almost every movie i think she's just that talented but when you got everybody together chris helmsworth christian bale even does good tessa thompson um russell crowe is zeus there's a, a theme that goes through it that's like the thor ragnarok but even the Thor Ragnarok, in all its humor and all its um, fun, you saw the elements of Thor that were there from the first Thor. An arrogant, maybe more, um, you know, serious uh, character. And the way they evolved him into this more fun, um, more naive sort of uh, feeling you get from Thor. And I love it throughout the movies, and even in this movie, but... I wanted a different tone, maybe, but there's just climax in this movie. There's just a kid feel through it, and you can tell from the beginning. I'm sure I've seen um, maybe even some pictures of uh, you know Thor's family being in the movie, his kids, and you know what? More power to them. Thumbs up to the Marvel MCU. Am I gonna say that it's uh, one of the most uh, critically acclaimed movies from the MCU, no, and Thor, the first one, I love so much, and Thor Ragnarok, well, I've done, um, I've talked about it a little bit, but the use of a Led Zeppelin song in that movie uh, took my breath away, literally, in a, in a sense. I think I had, a, I had a, I had another problem with the music. I don't care for Guns N' Roses with, um, paired up with the Thor. I didn't feel it. I didn't enjoy it almost any time in the movie. And maybe that's a, you know, a thing on me. Like I said, when I'm looking at this movie, I get so much enjoyment from it, watching it, but it's the little things that start to, you know, grate on me when I'm watching it or rolling my eyes, but it doesn't make the movie a disappointment. Like, I would have went in a different direction on certain things. But they stuck to their guns and did the Jane Foster, the illness, the whole Lady Thor aspect. I loved it. Um, and again, when you get the mixture of Korg and the humor and some of the uh, antics that go on in the movie, I thought there was going to be a more, you know, and it's there in the movie because Thor has these moments. So it's a little weird for me. To see him, this evolved, um, you know, hero, prince of Asgard, and the way he, you know, seems to juggle between aloof buffoonery and, you know, I'm a god who has responsibilities and I'm trying to find myself. So the journey was amazing. I really loved it and enjoyed it. But when I analyzed the little things, they start to, like, bother me. Now, how this movie ends, I don't see it changing. And kudos to them. Look, this could be a movie that really captures a really young audience. And it becomes one of their favorite movies. There's a part, and there's some the elements of the movie that are going to tend to that, like I said, because of the humor. But 
they set it up where Gore, the God Butcher, um, played by Christian Bale, uh, kind of gets defeated, or you know what? He doesn't expect all the uh, the Thors to show up and Valkyrie, and he kidnaps children, and it's a plot reveal type thing. And the way they culminated at the end is really, you know, awe inspiring. It gives you a you know that charge and that moment, but not the way it did for me with Thor Ragnarok, and the way they used the Led Zeppelin song. I totally disconnected. With the Guns N' Roses, and I would have left it out. The Guardians of the Galaxy are right in the beginning, and it highlights Thor's um, aloofness and his um, confusion, or you know, his journey is not complete. And, he, and they make a point of it with um, the characters interacting with him and where he stands and where his current position is. And it really shows parts of Thor who gets serious and actually speaks in a manner that's not really, you know, irreverent to what's going on around him. And I thought, like, the balance of that was off in this movie. So, in the long run, this will be a movie I will watch more than once. It fits in. It is fun, entertainment, done very well. It is not going to be the upper echelon of the MCU nor does it really revolutionize the Thor character. And I think it's okay if, because where they find this character in the MCU was successful and people love it. I'm more of a first Thor movie. I really love that movie, what it brought to the MCU at the time, what it meant for um, Thor to be um, humbled and to realize his connection. And they make a great um, connection to that movie in here with Jane Foster. And it's done amazing. So as we are battling this evil, trying to find out what's going on, and the, you know, comedy and the new uh, Asgard, so to speak, and I like all the little themes in it, but you're dealing with some heavy, heavy things going on. And I'm happy that they took light of it and they didn't... um let uh, magic be the total cure-all. But in balancing this, I found myself just a little perplexed at why they were doing so much, I don't know what you call it, tonal shifts, or just, you know, it just it kept me not in a real, you know, captivated place. And... Throughout all the fun in the movie and the hammers and that whole thing really was fascinating to me. James Foster's um, arc in this is the you know the best of this movie. I think maybe it's just me being uh, biased, but I just think as a performer and as what I could tell as a human, she's just fabulous and wish her the best of everything. Chris Helmsworth is just nailing it. I just think it's a little bit of a direction I wanted to see turned in a different way. I would have rather seen the first third of the movie, The Buffoonery, but it ends. And they kind of did that with Thor Ragnarok when he's fighting Hela and, you know, he gets his eye fucking taken out. I mean, this, and then there's still humor in it, but I think it's balanced better. And you know what? They do this uh, thing they always do in these movies where they have performers playing the roles of Thor and stuff, and that, they nailed it again. I think it's like Sam Neill. There's two end credit scenes. One I found uh, charming, and the other one I found in interesting, like, where are they going to take this? And like I said, I'm not going to do major plot reveals and, um, you know, all the little twists in the, in the movie. But there aren't many that you could think of. It's going to be a fun romp. Chris Homework just enjoys this movie. I'm sure the kids are jumping up and down loving this fucking movie. And his childlike demeanor in the movie matches, so I see where they were going. I just want to have a little more of a um the serious moments which show that Thor has evolved. He is still that same guy from the first movie coming through all these things, but he he he, uh, he comes to terms with him being, you know, aloof and more, um, you know, cartoonish, and it matches 
uh, maybe the comic book more, and I would see the cartoon. There was some great cartoons that happened for a while, and then they changed it. And they never really fathom why they did it. But that's Earth Mightiest Heroes, maybe, I think it was called. But, look, they kind of tease you here and there with things. They don't really nail anything down and cut it off from the rest of the Marvel Universe. But you're a little concerned, in a sense, with like all the stuff is going on. And you don't see other people. You should have maybe had a little bit of a guest appearance. But that's okay. This movie is just fun. It has a real deep story to it. And again, it could be the offset of that that kind of doesn't make it be one of the top movies you're going to rave about. But as a Thor movie, a fun romp, seeing uh, Jane Foster as Thor, it's no, you know, spoiler, but holy shit, it looked amazing. I, it was, I had a conversation with a friend, that, you know, and just talking about the idea that she looks dangerous with the hammer. Like Valkyrie looks dangerous with a sword. In a in way where you don't believe it maybe with some female action stars. And I'm not saying every action star should just start juicing or HGH or whatever. Or whatever the fuck they're doing. But she looks amazing. Tessa Thompson looks amazing. They look fit, thicker, bulkier. And... I swear when they do the change between Jane Foster and Thor, they might even have filmed it that way. Where when she's sick and ill, see, they could be doing anything with CGI, so I don't know if that's what's going on here. But kudos. I really would have thought they might have even spun it off and done female Thor movies. Like, that's how good she is as an actress, what, she, what weight she brings. But she's actually, to me, the most talented person or... In any of these uh, movies in that way. So, a missed opportunity here and there, but you're not going to be disappointed in this movie, in my opinion. If you're a fan of what they've been doing, it's going to be more of it. And just you ride this wave of fun. And the uh, little... No, it's not little, because it's a major theme when you got the villain on a quest that really doesn't make him a villain villain but of course it's going to because you're just you're you're hurt and you're in so much pain and you're you know you're corrupted in a sense and it pays off at the end i don't like the turn as much as i uh would have thought and they did this with the, what did I watch recently? I think it was like Obi-Wan. When you're watching this um, villain, sort of underling of Darth Vader, and she becomes the focus of the show in a way. And they do a turn with her, and same thing here. Like, I understand the concept here of, like, Jane Foster really can't win, and the reveal about her and the hammer was... um you know, a little sad, but it was true. It, they took it right from the comics, if I'm correct. But you have this villain who's, you know, scaring and, I would just say, psychologically torturing children. And most of them are Asgardian children. There'd be a couple of arguments in there, which I thought was funny. And, like, it didn't uh, really feel that they wanted to elevate the Thor to the next level of, you know, King Thor, which is probably where I thought maybe they were going to go with it. This looks like Thor could be the most fun section of the Marvel Universe. He's just so good at playing the character this way. And again, it's just one of those things that might not be just for me in a general sense. Man, I had so much fun with this, but I'm not going to sit here and just give you all the goodness of this movie which it has so much of it's a you know shifting of how do you balance comedy and serious tones and you did it so well before i would say i thought of dark world i think the second one is probably the um 
least liked. It, well, I don't know if you want to say made the least money, but you get what I'm saying. And I really enjoy that movie. I enjoy the evolution of Thor from the first movie from beginning to end and what it meant for that character. And to take him into this comedy route is amazing to watch and see, but I thought maybe I would get a little more of a shift, find a more serious Thor who's aware of what's going on and not so buffoonery. But man, he nails it. Uh, like again, I said, I think kids are going to go bonkers for this. And for Taika Waititi, a success, a huge success. As much as I'm nitpicking this and talking about things that, like, you know, kind of got, you know, under my skin here and there, I, uh, I don't want to take away from the, uh, the enjoyment of this film. Its storyline is on point. It's got a great um, flow to it. You're going to love the uh, moments and the connection between the characters. It really pays off. The chemistry, it all it works, and it works really well. Uh, surprising to see the moments I wanted more of that Thor, where he is serious and really connects with the audience and the character he's interacting with. And the moments are maybe rarer than I would have liked, but they're there. And the fun, the awe-inspiring action that you see happening with a female Thor and just what they were able to accomplish. Just kudos. I just want to watch it again. It's, it's going to be one of those movies. Thor Ragnarok. It's still. I might have watched that movie so many times. It's not funny. And the aspect of that song in there from Led Zeppelin just knocks it out of the park for me. Where in this one, the aspect of the music from Guns N' Roses draws me out. But... That's going to be something that other people are going to roll their eyes at me and say, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, they love that song. It fits for them. I get it. The tones, it fits for them. It, it makes them laugh and um, contemplate and be a little introverted at the right times. So this is not, you know, an aspect that's going to make the movie bad. This is not going to dr drag it down. I just like to point these things out because in the long run, you know, unless I'm doing an in-depth breakdown and we're talking about subjectivity and objectivity and, you know, art in any form. You know, you can't judge it. Well, yes, you can. That whole thing. I think it's a very good movie and an amazing run of the MCU. There's not a real stinker in this bunch. And how many movies are we in now? How many cohesive storylines are we threading through? So me saying that they should add a cameo is maybe the wrong thing to do. Where I would have liked to see, you know, a connection, but they didn't bother with that, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's, they're seeing that other people's opinions of the MCU being bogged down, having to go through so much to understand what's going on. Well, let's not contaminate this with uh, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange and whatever, because you know Doctor Strange fits into everything, and his humor and stuff would just coincide. I could see him being in, a, in the movie, whereas Hulk. I thought he was sadly missed uh, just to have his presence, but I think we know where that's going. Um, Thor Love and Thunder is a success for me, a fun movie I'll watch more than once. It has no way, brings me down at any point in the movie where I'm disappointed in this movie. But man, I see, like, for me, missed opportunities of um, what would have made this movie a great, one of my favorites of the MCU. It's got that much going for it. And you know what? I bet for some people, this will be that. This will be the crowning achievement of a Thor movie Thor run. I mean, are we there already? We've got Thor, Thor the Dark World, Thor Ragnarok, and Thor Love and Thunder. This is four movies with this guy who's committed to this role, who's amazing in it. Natalie Portman. I don't know how they got her back, but put her back. She's great. And... Probably the most talented thing. Uh, I, it was another conversation I had, like uh, watching like the old Twin Peaks stuff, and you know, almost recognizing that like Lara Flynn Boyle, she played Donna, was probably the most outstanding actress to come out of that. Notwithstanding the veterans on that show, because they're amazing, you know, Jack Nance and this is just Piper Laurie, things like that. However, let's get back to Thor: Love and Thunder as I wrap this up. So much fun. So much eye candy. 
well made uh, is it a uh mixed tone for me yes did the music not hit me as well yes but these are all things that i, I don't think i'm really going to judge if, even if i'm being a severe critic Yes, the tonal thing, possibly, because if I'm in charge of the movie and I want a consistency and an evolution where he ends this, where, <clears throat> let's say he's, uh, you know, think of different types of fathers there are out there. And you've got your, you know, father who has to be stern, he wants to be a kid, you know, your fathers will dress up in princess outfits for their kids, they love them so much, it doesn't matter, you just want to connect with them, but there's a time when you have to be stern. And at the end of this, they did a little bit of that. And it gave me hope, like, wow, you know, it's there. I think Chris Hemsworth's work knows it's there. Taiko Waititi knows it's there. You just choose not to do it. And you know what? I'm getting more respect for that because I can't, you know, determine my desires and stuff for a movie. I just hope that there's no stinkers in this bunch. That when a movie comes out that like this, it has little things that I start to nitpick. And But, but give you a general impression of a fun movie you're gonna fucking love i think it's, this is just so much fun watching this and it's just my own personal little things that i want to you know just put out there on these podcasts because that's just the way i feel it is natural and true like like i said I, i'm not you know getting into a three-hour breakdown which i love people who do that and like show the faults of the movie and i get it you know what because it's valuable and i watch those things i watch those four sometimes six hour parts that you know people who want to really break down why star wars and they failed and such where people say well i like the movie and i think that's where i'll wrap this sort of up where again i like to put across this feeling that it's not always about your love of the movie like i said this before green lantern ryan reynolds I've watched that movie way too fucking much. I really, I think I love that movie. But I get on a panel, I get a X, you know, how do I evaluate it? And will I tout its uh, merits? No. It's not a very well-made movie. It doesn't find its ground and um, propel you in the right direction for a superhero movie. But I fucking, you know, so it's that balance. I am definitely going to watch this more than once. It will be part of my repertoire that I watch. It is fucking good. I just think maybe the older I get, the more concerns I have in life or where I find my value as a creative person. I find myself maybe putting my own things on this movie. You know how they say the older you get, you know, you start not giving a shit about the words you use and being a little more, you know, to the point, uh, a little more... You know, up front, and it could be come off as a bad thing. I think it's also that that starts to make me find these things. But this movie is fun, serious. It has a tone that I really appreciated, knowing that my history, you know, my fiance battling cancer for 13 out of the 17 years we were together, to see that they were able to blend the humor around it. But I saw her struggle in it, and even her comedy and her routine. I found captivating because I've seen that in Michelle who went through it. And again, the tonal shifts in the movie just uh, not gelling with me in a 10 for 10 perfect way. But holy shit, I totally recommend this movie. Thor, Love and Thunder. You know, decent storyline throughout. You know, like I said, it's really taken from the comics. And for some people, that might not be good. Maybe they wanted a little more depth into Christian Bale in here, but the MCU has not really um, changed that formula too much, with certain exceptions. And although he's not bad in this movie at all, I found the twist with him and the sort of thing a little shortchanged. But is it going to change a general audience's love of this movie or enjoyment? No. This movie's fun. And I'm going to be honest, I want to watch it again. And isn't that really the real ultimate test here? It is not to say I can make a three-hour movie here or a podcast and show you the flaws in this from a critical um, you know, review type thing. 
Yes, and I'm happy for the people out there. And I'll even watch them. I'll watch someone take four hours to destroy this movie. But it's also understanding that I think this movie is good enough on a general scale to make people happy and enjoy the ride, not to win awards. And I feel that bullshit with, you know, people talk about Marvel movies and this and that. It's just life. This is it right now. This is the genre. Sometimes it was periods where westerns were big and political things and war movies. Like, yeah, we get it. But guess what? Marvel ha- likes to have a fun, lighthearted Thor movie with real serious themes in it that they do super well. So I'm not going to knock that. This is a fun romp that I am going to watch over and over. And I think in the end, I think people will gravitate towards that. I think this will be something that is um, seen for a lot of people as a culmination of an awesome run on Thor. And where's more? Right? Because you can just turn this into a trilogy and still have a, another... I don't know what the fuck this guy wants to do, Chris Helmer. He's just amazing in it. and um, Or as Thor in general. But do you say to this guy, look, Thor... Thor the Dark World and Ragnarok are a trilogy. This is not the cap. This is the beginning of a new one. And Love and Thunder, the reveal at the end, I found adorable. So, adorbs. Which is something people don't really hear me say. It's uh, something I reserve for special friends. Anyway, Thor, Love and Thunder. Wow, uh, success in what they did with Thor. Uh, Mjolnir, whatever the fuck they call it, Stormbreaker. They, they did a little story in depth in that, and I found it fascinating. I think Natalie Portman's performance here is fucking great. Borderline masterpiece. Again, is it a crush I have on her? I don't know. I mean, I'm fucking 51 or whatever. I don't think so. I think it's just like, you know, every once in a while, you know, I'm not saying she's the best out there, but, you know, you get your Ingrid Bergman's and your movie starts from the past, and I think the first moment I saw her, she reminded me of that, and I don't know what that means, if she represents and embodies such a class of actors that I put her in that, I already, I put her in that schema, like that framework. And it biases me. I don't give a fuck. I watch every fucking movie she's in. I don't give a fuck what the topic would be. She's that kind of actress. And in a way, she steals this movie, and rightfully so. And I can see why she came back. You know what? Do no, do a whole fucking series of Lady Thor movies, and I bet you they would be a fucking hit. You got such talent, and that goes around for everybody. The director here is. You know, I really am surprised at all this uh, content they've performed in all these years. And, you know, you can see memes out there about what the future will be. Like, you have to catch up with 400 movies. Well, guess what? When you grow up into this genre and they're coming from comic books, they don't give a fuck. They eat it up. And it's done well enough that the general audiences will also eat it up. Maybe not as sophisticated, know the ins and outs, but you're going to have fun. You do these movies well, produce them at a clip. Yes, could there be, you know, little things you'll take from this? Even though we had a pandemic, we're still fucking getting through certain things. Yes, there could be behind-the-scenes stuff, but I feel that this looks like fun. It looks like the writers are having fun writing, the director, all the cast. I mean, this looks like fun, and that's what it should be. Especially when you're dealing with these, um, you know, serious issues in that sense. What, uh, you know, the main villain goes through, what Gene Force is going through. I just would have liked a better balance of it. And the music, really. Just, that's it. Just doesn't fit with me. So, in the long run, Thor, Love and Thunder. I really love it. More in a, holy shit, I had so much fun way. If I had to watch it a couple more times and break it down, I'm sure I'm going to find flaws in it that I um, still won't break the movie. It's just fun. And the Guardians of the Galaxy thing in the bit in the beginning, it serves its purpose. 
it didn't has a great pacing to it. And like I said, when I want to watch a movie and decide I'm going to watch more and again and again, not before, because I'm going to do a four-hour breakdown, but because I had so much fun watching it, it's a win. So I recommend it. Go watch Thor, Love and Thunder by Taika Watiti, <laughs> starring Chris Helmsworth, Christian Bale, Tessa Thompson, Jamie Alexander. You know, it was good to see Jamie Alexander back. Uh, you know, got Russell Crowe in here. And Natalie Portman. Holy shit. I want to see more female Thor. I don't care how you pull it off. Oh, boy. Uh, politics aside, with the nonsense going on here, uh, I just wish everybody well. Sometimes we can only do the best we can do. And I love you all. Talk to you all next time. Laters.